Welcome to the Teacher Rockstar Podcast, a podcast that's dedicated to providing valuable insights, practical tips, and proven strategies to equip new teachers for success. I'm your host, Steve Hiles, retired educator, published author, and instructional coach. Join me in each episode as we offer a supportive platform for navigating the challenges of the teaching profession. In today's episode, we will be discussing navigating black history in the classroom an approach for new teachers with Dr. Aisha Johnson. And now I'd like to take a moment to share a little bit about today's special guest. Dr. Aisha Johnson, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and Outreach at Georgia Institute of Technology Library, is a revelator of Southern Library history, information access, and literacy. She stands on her commitment to enhancing LIS through service, practice, and curriculum to produce librarians and archivists who become scholar practitioners and leaders. Johnson stands firm on a soapbox for unveiling the history of underrepresented and marginalized communities. Her research focuses on the development of literacy in the African-American culture and philanthropic efforts that gave aid towards literacy in the South. Her advocacy is conveyed in her research and scholarship as well as her professional career with nearly 15 years of experiences as a practitioner, librarian, and archivist and organizational administrator. She, alongside other black librarians, were recently featured on Good Morning America advocating for black librarianship and the forthcoming documentary, The Black Librarian. She continues to build onto a platform of advocacy, bringing awareness to the need for more minority information professionals and the field of library and information sciences as an impactful career. Welcome to the Teacher Rockstar Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Hiles. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing navigating black history in the classroom and approach for new teachers with Dr. Aisha Johnson. She's the Associate Dean at Georgia Tech and also works with the Association for the Study of African American Life and History at the Foundation, what we know now as Black History Month. Welcome to the show, Dr. Johnson. I am so happy to have you here today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. All right. Well, would you like to share with our audience your journey in education? You know, how'd you get started in all this? Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I'm a lifelong learner. I am a natural born, uh, inquisitive person, and I just love uh, fun facts. You know, I love reading. I love learning about everything. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and while I understand I can't know everything, I'm definitely going to explore it. And I think my peers picked up on that very early on. So the library uh, was extremely important. Library visits as well as library uh, in my home with children encyclopedias. And after I read all of those, I moved on to the adult encyclopedias pretty quickly. And um you know, they really invested in uh, my int- in my interest in education, and uh, so did my my teachers. I think I was extremely privileged and lucky um, growing up in South Florida to have black teachers mm-hmm. um, in elementary, uh, all but two. From kindergarten to fifth grade, uh, my teachers were black, and I experienced that in such a cultural place as South Florida Uh in middle school and high school on. Um, So that investment, that intentional investment was there. So I just naturally, through my own uh, matriculation, I think education and librarianship just it found me okay well that that's an awesome story uh let me ask you this though um what practical strategies uh, can new teachers since this podcast is mainly primarily dedicated to new, new teachers employ um to navigate the challenges of teaching you know black history in the classroom and because sometimes it might be a little awkward for some i would think yeah, and you know? it's kind of awkward sometimes to try to teach uh, a culture or community's history that you are not a member of, uh-huh. right? Um, I think it's in- critically important to uh, be mindful of focusing on not only the facts, 
but heavy on the triumph, the adversity that various cultures overcome uh, in this country, I think is extremely important to also highlight the contributions uh, that, you know, particularly in this case, African Americans have made towards the country on a large scale, but also everyday life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, we talk about like, what is your take on like what you see in history books nowadays? I mean, in terms of. <laughs> I think, and it really just depends on the publisher, right? Because you have, uh, you know, history books like uh, Clark, uh, excuse me, uh, Darley Clark Hines, but you usually, that is extremely inclusive from, I mean, middle passage mm -hmm. to Obama, right? Um, it's extremely inclusive of all the facts, the the ugly, but the triumphs, the contributions, the, the you know, just. I think it depends on the publisher, well, right? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, like I mentioned, that's a book that I used to teach when I was teaching African American history in college. I see. Uh, to college students. So, you know, our literature is often challenged right now with the various legislation pieces. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. But there are there are a number of resources for um, teachers out there online that are free. And a lot of organizations have really focused on providing in very inclusive uh, lessons. OK. In how to teach them. All right. Well, what is your take in, in what ways can new teachers incorporate, you know, diverse uh, perspectives into their lessons on black history for a more inclusive, you know? educational mm -hmm. experience. I think community engagement might be a tool that we're not using as often as we should be. Mm. Community engagement, uh, particularly for students who, excuse me, particularly for teachers who do not belong to the African American community or uh, are just non-BIPOC, right? Not black, indigenous, well, person where? of color. Um, mindfulness, as well, but that community engagement piece of going out and partnering with, uh, say, a local museum, historical society, I think that's such a beautiful thing. It's I don't know how much they do field trips now, <laughs> but one of the things I most enjoyed as you know a pupil matriculating through grade school was those field trips, uh, particularly for. Now, I knew my history. Mm -hmm. That is something that my parents really emphasized at home and something that my teachers did, too. But there were other historical museums, especially in South Florida. Um, there was other historical museums from Jewish heritage to Hispanic heritage uh, that we took field trips to. And those teachers didn't belong to those cultures, uh -huh. but they felt that it was important to present the facts and the history in a very respectful manner. So I think going out and seeking those types of things and, you know, since COVID, we may not be uh, as prone to take, you know, groups of students yeah. to different places, but those people will come to the classroom. I do it, you know, when I'm requested any time to talk about uh, a, a variety of topics, uh -huh. it's, you know, just important community, seek people in that community and collaborate. Okay. That's, that sounds great. Now, um, can you speak to what tools and resources are essential, uh, for the new teacher, you know, aiming to create an enriching curriculum, um, with respect to teaching black history? Know that you don't have to do it on your own. You don't have to do it on your own. Again, there are wonderful textbook pieces, right, that are pretty inclusive, but there's also free resources because I know teachers' budgets are pretty tight. Yeah. <laughs> Respectfully, we do not value our teachers as much as we, we should um, with, you know, not even equal pay, but yeah, appropriate pay. Um, they are, you know, just wonderful contributions to American society and such a self-sacrificing role. So show all my appreciation to teachers, but there are also a number of free resources you may not be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, uh, which is of course on the National Mall in DC, provides uh, lesson plans online. The National Education Association does as well. PBS, I'm in Georgia, so Georgia Public Broadcasting. Yeah. You know, just a quick Google search on uh, teaching black history or black history uh, lessons for teacher will give you a number of free resources of not only a curriculum layout, mm -hmm. fun little quizzes, <laughs> uh, things of that nature to also engage students. But you don't have to do it alone. Uh, you really do. That is fantastic. I know that would be uh, 
music to teachers' ears. You know, free yeah. lesson plans. You know, what I mean? yeah, <laughs> that, absolutely. That is fantastic. I know that's a that's a great gold nugget there. So, new teachers, I hope you're writing this down. Okay. Yeah. Are you a teacher facing daily challenges that leave you feeling exhausted and overwhelmed? Imagine walking into a classroom where students are engaged, enthusiastic, and eager to learn. Picture a teaching environment where your lesson plans seamlessly captivate every student's attention. Introducing our solution, a treasure trove of resources, strategies, and expert insights designed to empower teachers like you. Our newsletter is your gateway to proven classroom management techniques, innovative lesson plans, and the support you need to thrive in your role. Ready to take the first step towards a transformed teaching experience? Sign up for our newsletter today. Use the link in the podcast description to gain exclusive access to a wealth of resources that will reshape your classroom dynamics. (laughs) Well, let me ask you, uh, Dr. Johnson, what role... Uh, does empathy, you know, play in a teacher's approach uh, to teaching black history and how can it be effectively cultivated in the classroom? Yeah, you know, I think um, empathy is so important because if I don't belong to a community um, or a community of color in particular, it may be hard for me to imagine going through certain things, Mm -hmm. right? Because Mm -hmm. it's not my culture. So, I can't have sympathy, but what I can have is empathy. And that is consideration. That is understanding. That is mindfulness and emotional intelligence on what if, yeah, right? Yeah. How would I feel? Um, I think it is critically important to uh, make those types of considerations in your lesson. Uh, just really think about it. Yeah. Think about how this would come off uh, to parents of students because sometimes students are not aware right they're growing they're learning Mm -hmm. but think about how it would come off at that dinner conversation when your parents well what you learn in school today (laughs) yeah no i my parents and i had that conversation we would sit down at dinner my parents my siblings and i every evening and that was the number one question Mm -hmm. how was your day how did school go what did you learn And usually when there's lessons that don't go over well, parents don't find out until after they're taught. So, you know, make considerations as a parent, make considerations as a person, um, and also talk to people. I I will repeat this uh, probably again, but community engagement and knowing that you don't have to do it alone. There's partners, Mm -hmm. there's people you can talk to uh, makes a significant difference so that empathy can actually be there. You know, that is beautiful being, you know, sitting around a dinner table talking about, you know, what did you learn in, in school today? I think that's just fantastic, you know, um, as opposed to a child saying, well, we didn't learn nothing today. <laughs> you know what I mean? You had to have an answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that... What did you, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, let me ask you, um, can you speak to in what ways uh, can beginning teachers foster open discussions around sensitive topics related to black history while maintaining a respectful and inclusive environment. I, I know you alluded to, to some, uh, is, is there anything else that you, you'd like to add to that? Um, be okay with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, black history is American history, but it is also a very sensitive history um, not only for African Americans, but also those teaching it who are not African American. It's very uncomfortable. And I think right now um, that we are more so about making those uh, of the culture, particularly white culture, who did this wrong, uh-huh. um, comfortable. And I think that's the wrong approach. I think it's a matter of we need to address the uncomfortability in it and really use it as a holistic American lesson. Right. Um, yeah. So it's okay to be uncomfortable. It's okay to have a little um, disagreement or it's okay to have a uh, difference of opinions, right? Mm-hmm. I always tell my students, if I assign a reading to you and you don't agree with it, let's discuss it. I probably assigned it for a reason. Yeah, right. Okay. right. I want to incite some form of thought, emotion, and let's discuss it respectfully. And I always think it's extremely helpful for you and uh, developing scholars to present all sides in all perspectives. Absolutely. So, 
you know. Yeah. It's a place to be uncomfortable. Okay. Well, Dr. Johnson, let me ask you, have you ever had pushback from parents on the teaching of, uh, you know, uh, black history? And if you did, what would you recommend to that new teacher? I have not had okay. uh, any pushback on the way I present. Um, I have had students say, why are we learning this? Mm -hmm. Right. And I explained to them that, you know, black history is really about understanding not only where we come from, but how far we still have to go. Yeah. And when you put it in that perspective and, you know, you tie it to what's happening today in politics, in the academic education environment, people usually get it more. Right. And those are students asking me these yeah. questions. Yeah. I'm OK with the students saying, I don't understand this. You know, why is this important? Um, this is this this isn't comfortable. OK, let's talk about that. You know, and that's really my uh, my guidance and advice to Teachers don't dismiss students. They're there to learn. Mm -hmm. They are there to build their voices. They are there to be someone in the future who's going to be an advocate for all. So help them shape their voice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what are the key components, Dr. Johnson, of an inclusive pedagogy that a new teacher should embrace, you know, when teaching black history? People. People. Consideration for people. It, it goes all around from uh, learning styles to gender to um, culture, history, community. It's really about the consideration of how people are different, you know, and uh -huh. not just, um, if you will, because I don't like standardized tests. <laughs> it's not just teaching to the test. Yeah, right. Teaching to the tests and standardized tests are just this box. And if it's like pass or fail, either this works for you in the way you think or it doesn't. I and I think teaching to the test, if you will, as I like to call it, is a problem because it tends to uh, catch on to other lessons. Right. And it's just like, oh, well, this is the curriculum. This is the box. There's no consideration yeah. for students. There's no consideration for the learning style, right? Uh -huh. um, and I think the the amount of consideration that we need pulls us outside of that box. That is what inclusive pedagogy is about. Okay, great, great. Well, now to kind of springboard off that, I, I needed, well, I wanted to ask you, how can new teachers foster or encourage critical thinking when it comes to teaching, you know, black history? Uh, what, what would you tell them? Focus on the facts. Okay. Like, <laughs> you know, I, 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 and I know, I do understand, and I know that this sounds so simple, so easy. Mm -hmm. Just focus on the facts because it is a complicated story from all aspects, right? Mm -hmm. It is a complicated history, no matter the side uh, that you fall on or where you stand in learning this. Uh, but focus on the facts. We heavily focus on the triumphs over adversity. Focus on the contributions on a large scale, on a day-to-day -day basis. This is infinite, uh -huh. right? You know, um, I travel a lot. So whenever I travel, I want to do, you know, not the fun stuff. You know, I want to do the fun stuff, of course, uh -huh. but I want to emerge myself in the culture, right? So that's why I say travel instead of vacation, because I want to learn about the history. I want to learn about the hardships. Yes, but those hardships should lead directly to a conversation of triumph and overcoming in the contributions that that culture has not only made to its local community, its country, but also the world. Um, so it, it, it may start with the conversation on slavery, a conversation, mm -hmm. a lesson on slavery, and then it builds from there. Yeah. Well, what is your viewpoint, and I have to ask you this, your, your viewpoint on um, role-playing with respect to lessons? No. No? Don't do it. Okay. I, I, it's, uh, I, <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, I've, I've known some teachers like, like they wanted to role-play the Trail of Tears, for example, or they wanted to role-play yeah. what a slave ship looked like, you know. I, I think that unless we are focusing on the positive contribution, mm -hmm. 
the triumph, the significant figures known and unknown, I don't think we should be reenacting things like slavery. I don't think the uh, frontal lobe is developed enough <laughs> to avoid trauma in the grade school age range. Okay. Well, how you know, um, but also you, we also have to make considerations for what the current and previous generation has experienced. Uh, Black Lives Matter is a whole movement. Mm -hmm. And that movement, even for myself um, as a seasoned professional, the movement was to counter the injustices towards black people. And it was traumatizing the entire time. You know, we went for a very long time where we did not have some news that the Black Lives Matter, Matter movement was advocating, you know, against some type of violent crime. Uh -huh. um, and I think often that we forget that it's not just the history lesson because it's still happening. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, uh, Dr. Johnson, let me ask you this. What would be, if you have to pick one, <laughs> there's probably many, but if you had to pick one biggest takeaway to uh -huh. share with our audience of new, and like I said, just, we have seasoned teachers as well. What would yeah. you tell them? What, what would you, what would be your biggest takeaway? Partner, you don't have to do this alone. Mm -hmm. It is shaky waters. Nobody takes anything away from that. Being a teacher is hard. Yeah. <laughs> Being, I'm a college professor. I'm not a teacher because I know <laughs> being a teacher is hard. It is such a beautiful profession. It is but such a beautiful career and it, it, it should be selfless and it is difficult. I understand it. Um, you know, I, I have to navigate the political challenges, but nobody is directly affected and on the board of political challenges in education like teachers, uh -huh. let alone the low pay. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, even when you're passionate about it, there's just so much weighing on you. Um, so please know you don't have to do it alone. Partner. Talk to community groups. Talk to, you know, members. I don't think we do as if and I, this could totally be a post pandemic thing, uh -huh. you know, where we were kind of scared out of the engagement. Yeah. I think we have to get back to the engagement of uh, community. All right. Wonderful. Uh, Dr. Johnson, uh, can you tell our audience how can folks connect with you? They've, oh, if they want to learn more, you know, about what you do and, and all that. Absolutely. Uh, they can connect with me on my website, drarchivist.com, D-R-A-R-C-H-I-V-I-S-T.com. There you can learn much about me, uh, my scholarship research, but also there is a contact form. All right. Uh, well, I have to tell you, Dr. Johnson, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to join us Thank today. You. It was Thank a real that. pleasure. And you know, I know we got, our audience has got lots of gold nuggets here. <laughs> and uh, I would love to have you back again for a future conversation at some point in the future. And uh, absolutely. Uh, on that note, I want you to have a fantastic day and we'll talk soon, okay? Thank you Take so care. much. I appreciate you. Uh, Thank you. Bye bye. Well, my friend, we have come to the end of today's episode, and I want to thank you for listening to the Teacher Rockstar Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Hiles. But before I go, would you like to learn more about our 12-month mentoring program, which is crafted to address the challenges of classroom management? Well, if so, simply visit teacherclassroomresources.com forward slash TRA mentorship for details. The link will be in the podcast description. And if you have an idea for a topic that you would like me to talk about on the show, just shoot me an email. I read everything that comes in, and I'd love to hear from you. Well, we'll see you same time, same place next week. And remember, my friend, you got this. The Teacher Rockstar Podcast with your host, Steve Hiles. We hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as we have. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and join our growing community of teacher rockstars. Until then, thanks for listening.